Good evening. Welcome to Our World Today, Our World Today TV.org, a progressive political show imagining a better tomorrow. I'm Suzanne Linton, and each week we bring you activists from around the Twin Cities to do some truth telling and inform you about issues that we all need to know about. And tonight we have two activists who have been around for many, many years. So, Sue Sue and Sue Ann. Uh, actually, the first Our World Today, I'm gonna just tell this for a second, happened on January, in the first Monday in January in uh, 2005. And these two were sitting by my side at that time. You guys did the very first show with me that I ever, ever did. So um, now you're back again. Thank you. Together too. <laughs> yes, you. and you, Sue Ann, you've been on many times. Yes. Oh, yeah. So uh, Sue show. Ann Martinson, you've been, you've been an activist, political activist, and on many issues for years, almost I all know, your adult life. You're or, reviewing our, you're reviewing our <laughs> I've been age. trying to be tactful, <laughs> right. but almost all of your adult it has life. Been I was, yes, it, it's been. I'll, I'll, yes. So and now. You're uh, doing a blog with Wham, and you've been very involved in getting a, a good media. Do you want to tell a little well, bit the, about the that? Well, the blog is called Wham Today. You can just Google it, Our World Today, Wham Today. Yeah, Wham Today. And it's Women Against Military Madness, and it's the blog of the Wham Media Committee. Oh, okay. so, um, and you've been, you've, you've kind of been leading the Wham Lady, Media right, Committee? As right, right. Like. Um, well, yes, but I also, we have, Obviously, other people on the committee, but I am the editor of the blog. Okay. And so that's, thank you yeah. for mentioning or and and allowing me to mention it. It's yes. just easiest to Google it. Yes, I am today. But, it's a but today, of course, I'm here with Susie representing yeah. Friends of Cold Water. Yes, and the name of our show tonight is Cold Water Springs, and we're going to talk about cold water. And Susu, Jeffrey, You've been an activist for a long time, also, and since a writer, Vietnam. and a yes, yeah, si since Vietnam. But but I've, when I look back, I think it's always been about water. Oh, well, anti-nuclear work. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, because water uses up and poisons so much water. Yes. So, yep, water. I, I speak for the seventy percent. I'm seventy percent water. You're seventy percent water. The surface of the earth is 70% water. Yes. I speak for the 70%. Yes. And cold springs. Cold water springs. Cold water springs. Yeah. And, and, and this is right in your issue then. And I want to ask you how long you've been involved with cold water. How did you discover it or how did you get well, interested in it? Uh, the spring near where I lived got dewatered into the sewer system permanently. It was called the Great Medicine Spring. It was in Theater Worth Park. Oh. It was said in like 1873 by Colonel John H. Stevens that native people came to the Great Medicine Spring from hundreds of miles to get the healing properties of the water. It's gone forever. Hello? So, and Glenwood Spring is also gone forever for 394, Interstate 394. So, uh, I used to get my water there, and Coldwater Springs is what's left. Oh, okay. So, I drink the water. Yes, and what, how long ago was this that you got? So I first saw it in 1995, and it just grabbed me by the heart. Yeah. Oops, I thumped my microphone, I beg your pardon. <laughs> And well, you already have several times, but yeah. never mind. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> so, so it just grabbed me by the heart, and um, researching it is so interesting because it hits all the histories going back to 451 million years ago, mm -hmm. which is wh when Coldwater, Coldwater Creek empties into the Mississippi, that bedrock is 451 million years old. Mm -hmm. And so the National Park System has redesigned this park to be sort of a vista without history, which is absurd because it's the most historic land in the state. It's where 
the, the state of Minnesota was founded. It's where the soldiers lived who built the fort, and then a civilian community moved in, uh, and then they went on to found the state. But before that, it's part of the emergence landscape of the Dakota Nation, the Dakota Oyate. And it's like the birthplace of the Dakota, of the Minnesotans. But the history of people in this area goes back 9,000 years to a 9,000-year-old spear point that was discovered in 1996 in, at the Sibley House dig in Mendota. And uh, I interviewed the, uh, the archaeologist, Dr. Robert Klaus, state archaeologist, and I said, well, where did the spear point, where did the rock, it was about five inches, and he found the bottom inch, and he looked at it and almost had a heart attack because he knew that it was this ancient spear point. He said mm. it was a bison spear point, and that bison were twice the size of today's buffalo. And I said, Okay, so old, where did I, old old bison, big big, big boys, prehistoric yeah. sort of bison. nine thousand years. Yeah, yeah, and so then I asked him, uh, where did the the stone for the point come from? And he said, down by Mankato, near Mankato. So it would have been upstream on the Minnesota River, where this rock was mined that was fashioned into this bison spear point because like today's weapons, they're designed for particular <laughs> situations. And uh, this was a bison point. And it got, this bison 9,000 years ago got stuck in the muck of the confluence of the Mississippi and Minnesota rivers, and boom, the community of hunters brought it down. Mm. And it's like 9,000 years. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that in school if you grew up here? Mm. Of course not. Did mm -hmm. you hear that Dred Scott was here? The famous Dred Scott case for freedom the from Dred slavery. Scott decision? Yes. <laughs> I actually did hear that. I heard that too, but it didn't have anything to do with cold water. Yeah. Cold he drank Dred Scott drank cold water. He was stationed here between eighteen thirty six and eighteen forty and um, he drank cold water because cold water springs furnished water to Fort Snelling for a century. Oh my. And guess who showed them the water? The native people. Of course. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. How did they get the water from cold in, spring in, to In horse-drawn wagons called water wagons in giant barrels. Oh. Very labor-intensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this was where the best water in the area came no, from. No, it's where safe water. Safe water. You see, this water comes clean out through the limestone bedrock, which has this incredible capacity to both clean and neutrify the water. So it's high in calcium and magnesium. Mm. Good water. Right, good. It's really good, good water. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. It's about water, yes. cold water. It's about cold We're water. We're about water. Yes. And we want to add anything there, or should we well, go on to the Well, uh, there's slides? really not too much that I can yeah. add. I think Susie's covered a lot of it. Just that my interest in cold water started in about, oh, 1999, during the um, Free State, when the property nearby was being um, confiscated for Highway 55, and at that time, then cold water was where the encampment that was there got their water. And there were native ceremony and other things going on there. And although, and while Susu's, while Susu's emphasis is both on the water and the land, I'm, I'm also concerned very much about the land and what, what has happened to it, mm. which we'll hear more about when we get into this slideshow. Yes. But cold water, to me, I have to say, it is a very magic place. I don't know what it is about it, but I take friends there. Now, this is what happened to me, mm -hmm. too, but I take friends there. Oops, did I touch my mic? Mm -mm. I'm sorry if I did. <laughs> um, and it made a noise. Um, and, and they say, oh, 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 that's what you're talking about. And it isn't anything I can say or define. You have to go there. Mm. 
and understand. There's something so very wonderful about it. Wow. And it transcends religion or anything. Yes. You know, it isn't about religion. It's about the a land natural, and the water and what it is. Wow, a natural wonder. Well, we do have some great pictures to start out with. And we're going to show quite a few of them. And then you're going to, we're going to talk about each one. So let's start with uh, the slides. The first slide Ooh, that's you'll beautiful. see. Yeah, this is... <laughs> You can just dive into cold water spring. Mm -hmm. So there's the little limestone spring house and the reservoir that was built in 1880. But Minnie is the Dakota name. Minnie water, like Minnesota, Minnie away spring. Mm -hmm. Snee, in this case, cold, cold water spring. So that's what everyone fell in love with. That beautiful green heart place. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Luscious. It, where is it located? It's I mean, halfway between Minnehaha Falls and uh, Fort Snelling. Or, yeah. or let's say Minnehaha Falls and the confluence of the Mississippi and Minnesota rivers. Okay. It's, it's, it's like, on the Mississippi. It is on the, the Mississippi, Mississippi side of the confluence. The side of the confluence. Of the Mississippi and Minnesota. Okay. Now, right. if I wanted to get there, how yes, would I get there? Yeah. Well, well, you could fly. You could, <laughs> there are a lot of birds around there. You could ride one of Just the, hop on the back you could one ride one of the deer or the, um, let's see, who else is there? Oh, oh, I could follow a rabbit. fox. <laughs> oh, and you know that great giant eagle that's, I mean, yeah. uh, it's where all the animals hang out, yes. where the rivers come together. Uh, and it's a sacred place to Native people because it's water. <laughs> But not just water. You have the Mississippi and then the Minnesota and then you have this giant cliff up and then you have a kind of a plateau. A mile and a half upstream, Coldwater Springs, another mile and a half upstream, Minnehaha Falls, and another further eight miles up, you have the Great Falls, which are now called uh, St. Anthony. Mm. So this was a region that was considered sacred <laughs> because it's water blessed and water is life. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so but it sacred. also is very practically just off Highway 55. Oh yeah. Just right. before you get to Highway 62 um, right. at 54th Street. So if you go if, south on 55. You go, if you're going and south you turn, on, And you turn east at 54th Street. It's yes. just, you just and go you through. go down the service road. Yeah. 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 Go down the service road, past the pay meters, through the cul-de-sac, and then you'll see it. And right. obviously, if you're coming from Highway 62, you yeah. also turn east, which is, yeah. mm -hmm. and then there's a service road right. that runs right along Highway 55. So right. it's, it's off 54th Street. Okay. In South Minneapolis, at so, the end of Minnehaha Park. Right. Yeah. At the south end right. of Minnehaha Park. So. Oh. Well, let's have the next slide. Okay. Uh, now this here, looks a little different. Uh, the property, the 27 acre beautiful oh. property, Bluff Top, Mississippi Bluff Top property, was clear cut in December of 2011. I came back from Christmas and I just like, I, could, I couldn't hardly believe it. This was, you mean it stayed the way it was in the first slide until 2011 and then? Yeah. Oh, and then they, no. Yeah. Yes, the National Park Service clear cut it. I mean, it's like, didn't they read the Lorax? Didn't they hear about climate change? The one thing that everyone agrees with is plant trees. So if you're going to have a tree thing, you want to keep the trees that you have and then plant more. So it was devastating. Yes. I think I haven't been there since all that was cut down. When I was there, the trees every, were there. Every tree was cut down. Oh, my. Yeah. In the center area, yeah. So yeah. at least 65 trees. Beautiful, big old trees. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and different kinds of trees. And then, and, and there was this sweet little grove of cottonwood trees. And it's like, wait a minute, cottonwood trees are indigenous. We will, you know, it, it's, it's this kind of arrogance that you can design the land better than God. And um, 
the idea of not having cottonwood trees around a spring in the Midwest is just silly. I mean, it's not going to work. And you'll never get rid of all the buckthorn. You're never going to get rid of all the uh, garlic mustard. And so instead of spraying all the poison and cutting and, you know, there must be a better way. And the Indians suggested fire. Fire, that's how they controlled the vegetation. They, because the vegetation they wanted was fireproof, bur oak trees and stuff. So, and then the National Park Service said, well, we'll do fire, but we can't do it for three or five years or something. And it's like, wait a minute, you cut down all the trees. Now all of a sudden we have a horrible drought. And then they planted all, right. all these little toothpick trees. And it, it's... Um, it's sort of like the industrial scale oh. model of architecture. Yes. But in the meantime, this is an ancient sacred site. And the reason we know it's sacred is because there's no trash there. They've done archaeological digs. And just like you don't leave your Kleenex in church, uh -huh. you don't leave trash at a sacred site. Water, pure water would be sacred. And it would be... what what's called by Dakota people neutral. It would be neutral property. It doesn't belong exclusively to anyone. It's part of what we call now today the commons. Water, air, you know. So um, just rearranging the landscape also <laughs> erases the history of the land, which is kind of sad. Wow. Well, let's go to the next slide. Okay. Um, this is a a map of the uh, Mississippi Minnesota River coming down from the north you have the Mississippi River and then that big giant thing is the Minnesota River which emptied oh. the glacier that got stuck <laughs> and created glacial Lake Agassiz and and so the Mississippi River is very steep and narrow it's a gorge in fact it's the only true river gorge on the entire length of the Mississippi uh -huh. River and then coming from the west, you have the Minnesota River. So you look at this water-blessed area and you think, hmm, good, good, a good place, mm -hmm. a kind place. It would have fish, it would have shellfish, it would have uh, deer, it would be heavy in uh, all kinds of animal life that you could eat. We grow vegetables here like crazy. I mean, this is the Garden of Eden. So there are all these mounds along the Minnesota River and up the Mississippi, except they were, you know, destroyed. But so, I mean, it's beautiful. Look at the way the water moves there. Mm -hmm. So anyway. And so that is probably why people find, settled there with the Dakota came here and the well the Dakota got pushed down from the Malak uh, area in about the 1700s early 1700s I mean yes they had been around mm -hmm. um, and they in turn pushed down the Iowa people the Ho-Chunk people and so on so so when the white uh, authorities came here after the Louisiana purchase the, to pay mm -hmm. for the Napoleonic Wars um, President Jefferson sent explorers around and see, to see what he had bought for his $15 million or whatever it was. That must have been a huge amount of money yeah. in those days. Yeah. It's a huge amount of land. Right. I well, mean, yes. the right. Louisiana Purchase. Yes, it yeah. was all the way to the Mississippi River, wasn't it? From the Mississippi to the Rockies. Oh, right. it was. That was the. Oh, yeah. It was oh. all the way out to. No, it wasn't. That, that went all the way to the Pacific. Yeah, to yeah. the Pacific, yeah. The whole. I mean, the whole two thirds of the continent. Yeah. Yes. Right. So they came up here, and originally the fort was, it was a commercial thing. They were doing fur, fur trading, and they wanted it to be safe for commerce. So they sent the soldiers up so that uh, the Indian people would keep shoving the animal fur at them. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it was, it was about money. Mm -hmm. So, okay, next. Oh, this, I love oh. this picture. There's this young Indian woman and a young black kid and a white kid, and there was a glass, everything we put down there, the, the National Park Service removes all the offerings. Mm -hmm.
but there was this glass down there and we used to leave it down there and so anyone who came could drink the water and oh. I got that idea from you going can still drink it oh yeah I drink it every day my gosh but you have to take it out of the right spot in the earth yeah you can't just and don't take it out of the pipe there's a pipe do not take it out of the pipe. well the native people say it, it ruins the nutritional value of the water I'm yeah I'm led to understand if you take it out of the pipe is that yeah it? because the water moves in a certain way mm -hmm. like it spirals and and it I don't know why but it helps the nutritional quality of the water Okay. And I think the pipe is lead. I'm not sure, though. Oh, God. And in which case, you certainly don't want to be taking anything. No, no. Well, it runs over dirt and out of pipe. Yeah. This is one of the big uh, problems. We want the water to be taken. Just here are the rocks. Here's where you take the water, right there. Not after it travels out here and then comes out of pipe. So... Uh, the National Park Service wants to seal off access directly to where the water exits from Mother Earth, or in this case, um, a Dakota deity named Unktehi. It's Unktehi's entrance into the underworld. This deity is nothing like the Virgin Spring, let me tell you. Unktehi is like a terrible, fearful deity with great power, water has great power, and, and it is the deity of the water and underground. And uh, the story goes that Unktehi can enter through cold water and bump up at uh, a, sacred, a sacred hill called Taku Wakanti, be the dwelling place of the, of the deities, or something sacred dwells here, which is where the VA hospital is. Mm. A healing place truly a healing place yeah. yeah yeah it's funny how it just miniawisne no it's miniawis miniawisne shni shni that's it miniawis shni and uh, the water same same name healing powers but I mean the Dakota people didn't always live here they were just the people who were here when the soldiers came mm-hmm so I am interested in actually 451 million years of history, the geologic history and the human history. Mm -hmm. So we have, it's, this is like a classroom. You're here on this great flat place underneath these rivers that come together. I mean, it's astonishing, the whole history of the United States can be talked about here because we can talk about slavery and we can talk about crops. We can talk, of course, the native history is much longer here. Think about the development of corn, rice, uh, and all the medicines that come from the earth. For example, willow, aspirin. And um, I know that Ooh. red willow was part of the knick-knick mix that was smoked in the pipes. And so I wonder if that had like aspirin like qualities and I think it did. Mm. So uh, it's astonishing how much history is here and how interesting it's continuously more interesting. Right. Yeah. Oh, I just, you know, it is. It's continuously more interesting. Susie's been working on this for how many years now and I've been, you know, over 10 and 12 at least and you know more and more information comes forth as, mm. as we continue to um, learn about what's in cold water, what about cold water and all surrounds it, all the history, all the land. It's as if the, through cold water you're discovering the roots of, of the state. Of the but, state. But, and, but the National Park Service, the quote is, we begin history here in 1820 and that's when the white soldiers walked in. <laughs> And it's like, wait yeah. a minute, we're, we're, we're missing about 9,000 years of human history. That we know of. And, well, yeah. That we know of, because of the, the bison spear. We yeah, know. yeah, and, and 451 million years of geologic history. Now, up north in Minnesota, at Walker, Minnesota, there was a 14,000-year-old 
native paleo Indian village in um, what had been a, a gravel hill dumped by the glaciers. 14,000. So it was wetter here. It's harder to live here. I mean, they came a few thousand years later mm -hmm. here. Over at um, Lake Traverse and Big Stone Lake, where the Continental Divide is, up north to the Hudson Flow, south to the Mississippi, hmm. and then, you know, kind of east out the St. Lawrence, um, there was a 9,000-year-old burial found uh, right exactly in hmm. between where the two lakes meet and the waters go north and south. And... Um, there were both Folsom and Clovis points found there. So points from east, points from the west. A true meeting. Hmm. Astonishing. Uh, ninth, so this means that there was a village, that there was some kind of spirituality, that there were services for the dead that included grave uh, gifts. Mm -hmm. I mean, why aren't we teaching this stuff? Like, what about the history of the development of corn? Yes. And it's, and it's, it started, corn is native to Minnesota, too? Well, I don't know, but they grow a lot of it up here. <laughs> okay, let's go, let's go to the next slide. Um, this shows, Ooh. yeah, I know, I know. This is so I painful. hope it doesn't get worse. Ever, it's yeah. just... We start out with paradise and, and they, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, they said you can see a lot of water in there, and they said this water is all man-made. And it was like, what? You have to kind of explain a little bit more. Well, well, there was the water a, itself isn't man-made, but the, well, they said the that, wetland is. <laughs> well, how could, I mean, they said that this was created by human beings, this water where this water's burbling. Yes. Go to the next, please. Um, okay. It just doesn't make sense to tear up the land. Oh, here we go. Now this is the. Remember, I talked about the industrial scale. Well, first in the foreground, you'll see the the cut off trees, the tree trunks, right? Those that was an indigenous row of black locusts, yes. which fixes nitrogen into the soil, is good for erosion, has these amazing uh, flowers that beekeepers adore. I mean, on and on. It, it's just a gift. Um, no, they took them all down. And then they had all these trucks, and it was like this huge deal for this 27-acre park on this really flat, fragile Mississippi bluff top land. And it's like, and the, and the mountains in the back, is there a, I can't, is there a, a person in there? It's, I mean, the scale is just enormous. Yeah, well, you can, can kind of tell with the. Yeah. And that was the ground up main building. They ground it up, and, oh, you know. Oh my. We thought they were just gonna take out the buildings. We didn't think that they were gonna redo the landscape. Um, next slide, please. Um, this is a picture of a man-made wetland. Now, I mean, hello? The, I mean, it doesn't make sense. And next slide, please. Um, this, we had this huge deal of, of fighting about, do you see the water burbling up there? Yes. Is Where that it's making the circles, yeah. Is yeah. That, that's that, the, that looks like it's a spring. Like well, it's exactly. Certainly, yeah. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> that's, that's the spring. It, I mean, the joke is it's erupting in a man-made wetland. Oh. Uh, and they rerouted that water so that instead of flowing into the reservoir, uh, it now flows, it used to kind of flow downhill uh, toward the north. And now they wanted it to go uh, sort of toward the west and then down toward the east. And they put in gravel and pipes, and they did de dewatering. And it, one of the problems is that when you do all this man-made stuff and you reroute the water, so mm -hmm. you don't have to mitigate it the next time MnDOT goes to rebuild Highway 55 and the 5562 intersection. See? Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, it's man-made. We don't have to mitigate. Mm -hmm. And this is the last natural spring in Hennepin County. Because no. the Great Medicine Spring is gone. 
Glenwood Spring is gone, and there's one other one out in Eden Prairie called the William Miller Spring. And what we just saw is Cold Spring. Cold, cold, cold water, water spring. Cold yep. water spring. Yeah. Because it didn't look like that when I was out there. Not, well. <laughs> that was a few years ago. Though. Yeah, but they just. That's because of all. They redid everything. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's just. So, um, in addition, next please. Okay. They, um, not only did they cut down on the trees, then they planted new trees. You see that little toothpick they're putting in the land there? Ah. Yeah. It just... <laughs> There's such a disconnect between you and what the, and the people well, that made these decisions, and I'm just... Uh, see, we thought that they would just take out the buildings and then work with the land as it exists. Yeah. The way you do with, for example, people. Yeah. Children, for example. Yeah. Or your dog. I mean, you can't rearrange your dog. You, like, you work with him or her, you uh -huh. know? And this idea that you can remake the land in your own image is is kind of scary. Because, like, who else can they remake? Not, I mean, yes. this is the land. This is what's been here, like, forever. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of yeah. scary. So, next, please. I have no idea. Oh, dear. Well, this looks a little better. Does it? Do you like that? No, but it looks better than well, some what, of the Well, what we have slides. here is three tiers of a man-made uh, creek bed. Okay. And uh, everything is like three stones. And this is limestone bedrock that they purchased mm -hmm. and manicured and placed artfully in their <laughs> newly created creek bed. Ah. And then at the bottom, there's rocks and stuff that, like, would have little. So this is the, the water that's flowing is, out of this cold water spring. Out of the reservoir. Out of, mm -hmm. right. out of the reservoir, down into the river. Yep. And, well, you know, I think manicured is, is the right word here. They've oh, manicured yes. the land. It's almost, not quite, like a golf course. Oh, or, oh. or, as we call it, a Mick Park. Mick Park. And... It oh was my. an urban wilderness, and yes. this this land had had actually been many times had been recontoured. I mean, it, because when they the Bureau of Mines came in, they recontoured it. When they um, they worked on it, when they created the um, you know the water when they were taking the water wheels, there was a railroad track that came in there, and on and on. But it was beginning to go back. It was beginning to recover itself and become an urban wilderness. And they took that and they destroyed it. And it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. And one of them said they thought it was messy. No, an eyesore. Oh, an eyesore. An uh, that was eyesore, it. the native. And, <clears throat> but, was, yeah. but they were talking about the buildings. And we were like, we had nothing to do with the buildings. Oh, I We thought, were there yeah. for the trees and the water and exactly. the sky. And beauty cells. Next, please. I'm just shocked. It has, well, yeah, it, it, I don't know, but the, yeah. this is our vision. Yeah. The water comes out of the rocks and it flows So down this is hill. now Cold Water Spring. Well, this is our vision. That was this a is, picture I this took. This is yep. one of the springs, and okay. that's the main, one of the main ones that comes in. And okay. so it, you can call it Coldwater Spring, but it is Coldwater Springs because it comes in from several different uh -huh. places. So. Okay. Just to let the, the water come out of the rocks and flow down the hill, doesn't it make sense? I mean, that's how it cleans itself. Next, please. Yeah. Um, this is that same creek bed the way it used to look. <laughs> I okay. mean, you saw that flat oh, another, land I with no vegetation, and now you see this young woman standing on rocks as the water flows around her. And I mean, it's so beautiful. You can almost breathe the yeah. green freshness of that scene. And they made that manicured creek bed artificial, mm -hmm 
cut the stones. I mean, wouldn't that look them. good in a golf course, that manicured creek bed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mac Park. Uh. Um, next, please. Who, I mean, who are these people? Yeah. There they are. They're the decision makers. And you know what? They're nice guys. They're nice men. They have families and they care and all this stuff. But um, we think they need to confer with the native people and with environmental groups because the park was designed apparently out in Colorado and they forgot to read part of the instructions, for example. They took down trees where you weren't supposed to be able to plant new trees because of the airport flight path. So the man on the left is Superintendent Paul Leibovitz. And when the, on the day the park opened, he um, emailed the uh, Mendota, Dakota community and said, you can't have a pipe ceremony. Oh. Yeah, you can't pray. Well, there on the... Yeah. There at Coldwater. At Coldwater, yeah. right. So there was a pipe ceremony, and they brought in an armed guard and a guy in a flak jacket. The person on the right in the hat is uh, John Anfinson. He's got a Ph.D. in history, and he said that we start, cold, we start history here in 1820. He also said, well, we don't know if Native people were here because they didn't write down their stories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't write. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Well, if you they know, didn't write, they didn't exist. Uh, that's well, the you way know, they seem to look at how it. many spear points and arrow points have we found throughout the state of Minnesota? We know people have been here at least fourteen thousand years, and the entire state is salted with with Indian artifacts, native artifacts. People were all over the place. So the idea that Native people weren't there is ludicrous, particularly because it was the Dakota people who showed the soldiers this clean source of water because the first winter they were, they were there, they lost one out of five of their men because they were poisoning themselves mm. with unsanitary <laughs> practice. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it was the water. It's astonishing. Ah. So... Um, the next slide is um, a fracture map, and it may not show too well, but people have a question. Okay, here it comes. Where does the water come from? So you see the little blue thing, that's the reservoir. The main fracture line or that goes... Or cold, uh, even speaking of, that's... Cold water springs. Cold water spring. So there's a big line that goes from north northwest down southeast. Mm -hmm. That's the main fracture line. <laughs> MnDOT believes that the water comes from Lake Minnetonka, whereas the Minnehaha Creek Watershed District says the water comes from a half mile circumference around below the Minnehaha Creek Watershed. So it's hard to know. The water comes from a number of places. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the answer. It's not one place. So that's where the water comes from. And when Sheldon Wolfchild, who um, was instrumental in getting uh, cold water declared to be a traditional cultural property, which is a legal term, and also sacred, that went through in 06, um, when we showed him this map of the limestone fractures, he said, oh, the elders told us that the water comes through like veins, like ve and he made, he spread out his fingers and he said like veins and he said, mm. he said, you know, I want a copy of, of that map, that fracture map. So one of our, our uh, items that we asked the National Park Service for was, let's take the lines on that fracture map, which are done by ground penetrating radar, and let's move them out and see how far do they, because they stop at the edge of the page, and it's like, wait a minute, is the main fracture line actually from Lake Minnetonka? Mm -hmm. And we know that some of the other lines are from um, the airport, <laughs> which has a lot of toxic stuff like uh, de-icing fluid. So um, they said, oh, that's five years away before we get the money for that. And I'm thinking, no, I think you, if you're going to preserve and protect the last natural spring in the county, you want to know where the water comes from so you can preserve and protect it. Well, yes. See, so 
we have different ideas about. <laughs> Thank uh, goodness. You yeah, have and the National ideas. Park Service seems to hold all the cards now, kind of all mm -hmm. the power, which is too bad because the native people um, have wonderful ideas about what it could be like. They treasure this water. They have ancient stories. Eddie Benton Benet, a Nishinaabe elder from Lakutare, Wisconsin, northern central Wisconsin, talked about his grandfather on this, and I transcribed the tape, and he said, my grandfather, who lived to be 104 and died in 1942, he told, he retold how they came, he and his family came to this great place by foot, by horse, by canoe, to where there would be these great spiritual gatherings, mm -hmm. and that they always camped between the falls, Minnehaha, and the sacred water place. And all nations drew the sacred water for the sacred ceremony from the sacred water place, cold water. Mm. And the uh, National Park Service rejected that, um, <laughs> everything. They did. Yeah. They also rejected their own federally funded ethnographic study, which is about an inch and a half thick, which found cold water to be a Native American traditional cultural property. And they said, no, but it's just one guy who's saying, and that's Johnny Infanson. Nice guy, but we can't, we can't figure out why there's such prejudice against 9,000 years of Native American habitation from which we can learn a few things. I mean, yes. yeah. It, it, now you do see it as prejudice, just not ignorance. Well, he's got a PhD in history. I mean, yeah. the spear points, the yeah. 9,000 year old spear point, the 14,000 year old village site, it's hard to understand because native history is about, uh, compared to 200 years of European American history here, we have like 9,000 years of history and we have this idea they planted those little toothpick trees and they're saying, oh, well, we're planning for 100 or 200 years in the future. And I'm thinking, well, let's see, 10,000 years ago, 10,000 years in the future, okay? 200 years in the future, 200 years ago, the only white people in the area were traders, and they were French. Yes. So in 200 years, when those toothpicks that they planted grow to maturity, is the United States of America going to exist? Mm -hmm. How about the National Park Service? How about the clean water coming out mm -hmm. of the earth? It just seems like... Uh, when you think of all that's happened <laughs> in 200 years. Yeah in the United States to the natural environment. Yeah. Hello, yeah. yeah, yeah. And particularly, why would you cut down all the trees in the days of Lorax and climate change? <sighs> it, it, and then to say we're planning for 200 years in the future, well, come on, what about tomorrow? What about, I mean, we have five years to slow the growth yes. of carbon garbage in yes, the air. Exactly. We have five years. and. You're talking about 200 years? Mm -hmm. That that takes it beyond the realm of personal responsibility. Yes. It's like, oh, we have, you know, 200 yeah. years. Inexplicable. Isn't it, though? Yes. Okay, well, what do we have for the next slide? Oh, this is called the duck's picture. Oh, and, that's what those are. Yeah, and they were like... <laughs> At one point, okay. Sue Ann counted like 500 ducks in the reservoir oh my goodness. because the water never freezes because it's groundwater and it's ah. and summer, winter, night, day, same temperature. It's supposed to be 47 degrees, but it's also been measured a little warmer than that. So it doesn't and you can kind of see smoke or steam coming up off the water. That was the coldest day. It was January 6th. And it was really cold. And every tree that you see there is gone. Every single tree. Hmm. And the tree with like the TP opening, that was called the spirit tree. And hmm. everything that was sacred to the people, the spirit tree, the grandmother willow tree, the labyrinth, the Dakota men's fire circle, was destroyed by the National Park Service. All the offerings get taken. And it's... It's incomprehensible because Native history is very interesting and it's much older than white history here. Yes. 
And then we have this wonderful Dred Scott story, yes. this man who lived here and well, sued for his freedom from slavery and lost. Yes. And he lost because he was declared to be a slave and therefore not a person. Mm -hmm. And therefore so he had no Dred right. So how did Dred Scott get, get into Minnesota? Jared, Dred Scott I mean, came with him? his master to yes. Fort Snelling. Everybody at Fort Snelling drank cold water. Mm -hmm. 1836 to 1840 he was here. He met and married his wife Harriet here. Guess what? Black marriages weren't recognized. Indian marriages you weren't they were recognized. Both African slaves. American slaves. Slaves. They were both slaves legally. Yes. Ah, but they had. But but this was I the forgot. free Wisconsin territory, so slavery didn't exist here. Oh well, mm, you know. Yeah. But uh, uh, so he met and married Harriet here, and he was married not by any authority except for the Indian agent Lawrence Tolliver because Indian and black marriages weren't recognized. Does that remind you of a political situation today? <laughs> it certainly does. Imagine yes. telling people that they can't pray on opening day yep. of the park or that they, they can't, can't get married. married. I mean, yes. it just seems kind of like out of your power. Yes. You know, it's like you can't breathe, you can't sing, you can't pray, you can't love each other. Yes. Oh, come on. So working with water all these years has taught me, I mean, so much. Yes. And it's it's about the flow. You have to get with the flow. The water mm -hmm. comes out of the rocks and it moves down the hill. Isn't it beautiful? It furnishes water to the dragonflies mm -hmm. and to the mosquitoes mm -hmm. and to the fox and to the deer and to we have our own coyote clan at Coldwater. Mm. The Coldwater Coyote Clan. And one time a friend of mine saw him crossing the road cuz we mean real coyotes. Yeah. Oh, at Coldwater. I thought you were talking about people that had named themselves. No. This is real oh, yeah. coyotes are coming to the oh, Coldwater. Coyotes, foxes, rabbits. Uh, I mean, everything. Uh, owls. It is, it is, if there's a ceremony there, almost always an eagle comes, circles, clockwise. Mm -hmm. It's astonishing. <laughs> like, there's the story about the reporter that asked this uh, Indian elder, how do, how, how, do, how do you get your pet eagle to come and fly around every time you pray? And it was like, <laughs> yeah, 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 you get it. Yeah. So we have a lot yeah, to learn. We trained them. There's one, there's one final slide that, okay. that we put in. Okay, Ooh. beauty. No, don't tell me that's gone. Um, that's gone too? There were, no. That tree could still be there. I'm not certain which. I think it's a bur oak, and but one. You know the picture of the water coming out of mm -hmm. the rocks, and the mm -hmm. picture of all the greenery around the reservoir. Mm -hmm. One of the virtues of life, one of the great virtues in life, is beauty. Mm -hmm. Right? It's such a remarkable thing. My mother told me. Always notice beauty, mm -hmm. and when you notice it, talk about it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think I'll send that out as my Christmas card this year. Oh, that's so beautiful. And mm -hmm. it's so peaceful. Mm -hmm. And the snow on the limbs, and you know, is this the dead season? I don't think so, not when you have all that water being mm -hmm. held up in all those limbs. It's fabulous. So one of the things about cold water that draws people to it, that grabs you by the heart, is beauty. Mm -hmm. And for example, the National Park Service said, we're going to remove the cup plants. There's these giant plants that have these leaves that trap water in them. And the hummingbirds and the bees come and <laughs> slurp up the water in the cup. No, they're not the right height. These flowers are not the right height, and so you're going to nuke them. Yeah. And we're going to move this, the sacred prairie sage that was planted because it's not in our plan. And, you know, I've been watching cold water since 1995, and the plan is the flow. And the water comes out of the rocks, and it goes down to where the bedrock is 451 million years old. Mm -hmm. And no matter what the people do there, you know, unless they put all the water in pipes, which, you know, 
the water still will. The water will well, come. Well, come I, I'm It'll just, find another channel. And this is the National Park Service. Right. This is the government that is agency. So, that yeah. has made decisions so disconnected with nature itself. I mean, like the, the connection of water to the land and the animals and the trees and the... And the well, our geohydrologist said Cold Water Springs is at least 10,000 years old, but it might be older. I would have to compare its ravine, its valley that it carved with water to other valleys in the area, and of course there's no money for that. But so you can read the story of the land. Mm -hmm. You can also read the story of the indigenous peoples who came through for 9,000 years. Yes. Different peoples came through. We don't even know their names for themselves, but they probably called themselves the people. And uh, wow, it's right there. The history is written in the rocks. And the way the, the water has carved the land mm -hmm. And what's in the rocks, as you go down the levels from on top of the Mississippi Bluff down, it's about half a mile to Coldwater Waterfall, mm -hmm. which is where the sandstone starts. It's, I mean, it's astonishing. It's so beautiful and it's so old. It, cold water has been flowing since before people were here. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's like, wow. And we're related to it, and I drink it, and it makes me feel like I belong here. Mm -hmm. And everything I learn about cold water helps me figure out where I am so that I also get to sort of like who I am. Because mm -hmm. where you are is part of who you are. Because of the water and the air and mm -hmm. the people and the, and the culture. Mm -hmm. So. Yes. Water. And we're all connected. By water. By water. And we're drinking the same water that the dinosaurs drank. Isn't it astonishing? And we're related back. So we also must be related future. So we better take care of that future. Because yes. what happens to the water happens to the people. I mean, we have water wars in Palestine, Israel, in the Sudan. Um, as the uh, Himalayan glaciers melt, there's so many people in Southeast Asia who depend on Himalayan water. It's called the Ganges, mm -hmm. <laughs> for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will be a, a tragedy of human proportions we can hardly imagine. Mm -hmm. So it's about water. It's all, yes. But you know what's interesting? I know that when the wind blows, the trees, like the cottonwood trees at Coldwater, had a certain song, and their leaves would flicker. Mm -hmm. And then the water has a song. And there was a, a Mendota, Dakota woman, Tiffany Egenberg, who wrote this beautiful poem about cold water. Cold water spring, can't you hear her sing? And I think she said it, can't you hear it sing? The water does sing at cold water. And it will continue to sing. And the trees will grow. And the trees they don't want there will grow because cottonwood trees. Hello, it's indigenous to that environment. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's like telling kids to be quiet. Right. Telling nature not to be itself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Whereas we're supposed to be part of the nature and, and we can learn some things mm -hmm. about cold water. Yes. It's rather than creating can. it in as a it's a mech park. It's kind of a suburban a corporate park. mech park. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Beauty. We have a few more minutes, and then we're, the hour has gone by. Are there any thoughts that you have I, that you want to make sure? I want to say that Friends of Cold Water is very interested in having cold water legally recognized as a traditional cultural property, that's a legal term, for Native Americans and for all Native Americans because this was a gathering place for all the upper Mississippi River tribes, and that's just in known uh, history. So mm -hmm. we had the Dakota, the Anishinaabe, the Sauk, the Fox, the Iowa, and the Ho-Chunk people. Okay. And they gathered here. And treaties were signed in this area. And the water at this area furnished the water to the, the people who started the state of Minnesota. So it just behooves us to pay attention to our history. 
and certainly not to stop our history just when European soldiers came here because um, we're um, depriving ourselves of our own history. And that's a darn shame because I'm going to tell you, we've done a lot of school tours down at Coldwater. Oh, you have? Oh, yeah, man. They so barrel off those. So school teachers are watching now. Yeah. And friends of Coldwater dot org. Yeah, friends of Coldwater dot org, org, which has been on the screen quite a bit. Right, and and uh, you know we'll meet you down there, bring the kids down, and we'll talk about it. Great. And of course, what the kids want to hear about is the Native American. I mean, they don't care about uh, taconite pellets. <laughs> and, <laughs> I, oh, I, really? Yeah, really? Yeah. I heard a whole thing, twenty minutes on taconite pellets from the <laughs> National Park Service, and I thought. I have a handful of those that I found here. It's called pollution. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. But so they want to hear about Native Americans, and there have been many ceremonies there, and it's, it's a beautiful place, and it will be beautiful again because uh, it will be so high maintenance if they want to make their kind of golf course, kind of mech park thing. Uh, you know, there's just not enough money in the world to create this perfect landscape that you contend used to be here. Uh, it didn't ever used to be there, like like they have it. Right, and I think the idea kind of is that it was perfect in the first place, just by being its natural Beautiful. self. Yes. Beautiful. Everyone mm -hmm. loves beauty. It, may, it uplifts you. I know. And also, when water flows, there's that thing about negative ions, mm -hmm. and it makes you feel happy. Mm -hmm. So we have sponsored uh, full moon walks, every single full, full moon since the year 2000. So our next full moon is, I don't December 28th. Mm. So right after Coming Christmas. Coming up before, yes, before New yeah, Year's. Right before the New Year's, and right, and the New Year's is, you know, the end of the world as we know it, sort of on the 21st on mm -hmm. solstice. And um, so, uh, some people think it's the end of the world, and some people said it's the beginning of living in harmony with the earth. That's what I've heard, too. Yeah. That it, in, actually on the Mayan calendar. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the beginning of a new. Of the new age. Under, yes. yes. The understanding. Understanding with of our the connection four colors with nature. of people who yes. come together in the center, which mm -hmm. is water. So. Uh, are people welcome to come out? Did you go out there on the full moon? Well, I would guess, I would say. Friendsofcoldwater.org. Yep. Go to your website and find out. There's about free parking at Coldwater. If you go to our website, you'll get directions on how to get there. The park is open and free, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Okay. Well, thank you, Susu. This Suzanne, very, thank you so much for inviting well, Friends of welcome. Cold Water. You're welcome. And uh, to our listeners, thanks for tuning in. OurWorldTodayTV.org.